Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I wish to discuss Professor Paris Haruni's great antenna in Armenia. This might well be the most important video that I ever release on this channel because Professor Haruni's antenna proves to the world that there was no Big Bang. Many of you know that the central proof of the Big Bang is the microwave background. The Earth is surrounded by microwave radiation with an apparent temperature of 3 Kelvin. This was first reported by Penzias and Wilson in 1965. The paper is readily available online for anyone to read and a link is provided below. Here is a picture of their antenna which is positioned with the aperture facing down as it is no longer in use. At 4 GHz, Penzias and Wilson reported a total temperature of 6.7 Kelvin. They assigned 2.3 plus or minus 0.3 Kelvin to the atmosphere and 0.8 or plus or minus 0.4 Kelvin to the ohmic loss of the antenna. They estimated that the backlobe response to the ground would only contribute about 0.1 Kelvin to the total. An unaccounted temperature of 3.5 plus or minus 1 Kelvin was finally reported. Importantly, nowhere in the paper is the diffraction of signal into the horn of the antenna discussed. The antenna is sitting at an elevation of only 147 feet, just a few miles from the Atlantic Ocean at the Crawford Hill Laboratory in Holmdale, New Jersey, just adjacent to Union Beach. Importantly, Penzias and Wilson do not assign their excess noise to the universe. That was done in this paper, which actually preceded their own. So you have to ask, since when in science is the interpretation of a result given before the result is actually published? Furthermore, in order to assign an actual temperature according to the laws of thermal emission, the source must be in thermal equilibrium with an opaque enclosure. That was never the case for the Big Bang signal. So in claiming that the temperature was real and not simply apparent, all these people were not observing the laws of thermodynamics. They also neglected that water could be the source of their signal, as I have made plain in many papers, including this one. The astronomers claim that they have verified the Penzias and Wilson discovery using the COBE satellite, additional ground-based antennas, rockets and balloons. Yet in every case, those instruments were subject to diffracted signal from the ocean, and I have made this clear in my discussion on the COBE satellite. They also tell us that they have observed the background with the WMAP and Planck satellites located at L2, at a distance of about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. Yet WMAP was a differential instrument. It was never able to measure the Penzias and Wilson monopole. It never reported a 3 Kelvin signal because it couldn't. Its maps have nothing to do with cosmology, as I have made evident in this paper. As for the Planck satellite, it should have been able to measure the monopole, but never reported such a finding. In fact, it uses data from the Kobe Ferris horn in its analysis for the monopole value. That clearly communicates that the Planck satellite could never measure the monopole on its own. I have previously examined the 4K reference loads on the Planck satellite. That analysis reveals that this instrument had fundamental flaws in design even before launch. As a result, it is apparent that the Penzias and Wilson signal has never been confirmed at a physical distance away from the Earth. Now we finally come to Professor Hurini's antenna. I first learned of this antenna just a few weeks ago. Hurini's antenna is located far from the oceans on Mount Aragat in Armenia at an elevation of 1700 meters or about one mile. It is the world's first and only optical radio telescope. It has a 2.6 meter diameter optical telescope which is coaxially aligned with a 54 meter hemispheric radio telescope. Much of the disk is below ground level as you can see here. The detector is located in a second bell-like dish suspended on an arm which is able to rotate. Because of its design, it would be difficult for signal traveling parallel to the ground to diffract and enter the detector of this instrument. During its very first days of operation, the antenna detected an important radio flare on the Eta Gemini star, as you can learn here. 
The designer of this great antenna was Professor Haruni. He was a key figure in Soviet radio engineering and was highly decorated by this nation as a scientist, as you can learn in the links below. The antenna itself was utilized to make measurements from about 1985 through 1989. This was a period of time associated with the breakup of the Soviet Union, of which Armenia was a satellite state. During this period, the experimental and theoretical work on this antenna was limited to defining the antenna parameters and a very small amount of work on radio astronomy. The scientists involved had very little funding and they continued to work as best they could after 1989 based largely on their dedication and the enthusiasm that they had for this instrument. They reported a few papers as seen here and listed below. Since 2012, the antenna has been decommissioned due to lack of financial support. However, soon after the antenna was enabled, Professor Haruni discovered that the self-noise of his antenna was only 2.6 Kelvin at 8 mm wavelength. He immediately recognized that this left no room for the signal from the sky. There was no Big Bang. You can learn more about Haruni's measurement in this paper, which is also linked below. Haruni should have had a total signal of about 6 Kelvin, with some signal coming from the cosmos but the signal was just not there. So he sent his data to 10 of the world's top laboratories and asked them to highlight potential errors in his measurements. None of them replied. Of course, there was no error. Haruni was an expert in radio engineering. He knew how to measure antenna noise. Professor Haruni paused for a period of 10 years before publishing his data, waiting for any answer. His first publication was in a Greek journal, as you can see here. Yet that paper could no longer be found in the journal archive. Still, the editor-in-chief of the journal, Professor Nicholas Usunoglu, had initially invited Professor Haruni to send his findings to him. We were able to finally find a hard copy of the paper in a library in Armenia. Otherwise, the paper would have disappeared from the face of the earth. People are now working to try to restore that file. I was able to receive a copy of the paper from his niece, Professor Ervik Sargsyan, who is also a radio engineer. Ervik is now trying to restore and save this important antenna. A YouTube clip can be found below where you can see the deteriorating state of the adjacent buildings. But the heart of the antenna, the great dish, is still essentially intact. The antenna can be brought back to life simply with new electronics. Here are Arabic's contact information on the chance that someone with the means to do so will join others and assist in accomplishing this goal. Someday it will become clear that this was the antenna that killed the Big Bang. This instrument represents a scientific treasure for humanity and for the people of Armenia. It is my hope that the public becomes involved to bring to light the critical results of Professor Haruni's antenna and to help usher in a new dawn in astrophysics. At the same time, it is clear that the Big Bang could never have produced the 3 Kelvin radiation which is surrounding the Earth. I have long argued that Kirchhoff's law is invalid and as a result, it takes a physical lattice to produce a thermal spectrum. No physical lattice existed in the Big Bang, and that is why that signal was never produced by a primordial explosion. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the video to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.